Hi, I'm Yoram. Today I want to talk about a real challenge that we have to face as managers, and this one really crosses all levels, from a junior manager to the top executive. Are you holding your people accountable? The simple straight answer you might be thinking about right now is yes, of course I am. But to be honest, very few managers truly know how to hold people accountable in a way that generates a good working culture while maintaining a high level of productivity. What I've seen in my career is mostly two types of managers. When it comes to accountability, you have the one extreme, which is the micromanager who holds you accountable to each and every line of code you write. And the far opposite, the manager that doesn't seem to really care or know what exactly you're working on. Now, of course, these are two extremes, and I know that you might be thinking that I sound a little bit too harsh, but what I want to be clear about is that this is not a simple skill. It requires years of experimentation to get to just the right balance for you. So you're not a micromanager, but you're also not one of those managers that don't care. Let's start by defining what I mean by holding people accountable. Holding people accountable is about making sure people have the freedom to work on their assigned tasks in the best way that fits their style, while making sure they deliver what is expected from them in terms of due dates and quality. My personal philosophy has always been that I treat people as adults. And if I don't trust that you have the skill to do your job, then I'm just not going to hire you or I'm just going to let you go. But if I do trust you, then I need to let you use your skills in the way that best fits you. So the question we have to answer is this, how do we make sure that you and I agree and track what you have to do, and when you are supposed to deliver it? The answer to this question is a clearly defined working process that everyone fully understands. And that's really important. People need to understand the process. They don't have to agree, but they have to understand. This might sound easier than it is in real life, but this is why I'm going to share with you the process that I've used and worked for me many, many times. Again, take it and you know, do it at whatever you feel to come with your own version. So the first thing I do is you fully understand what you need to do before you start working on it. If possible, I would make sure that you have a clearly defined user story with acceptance criteria. But if I can't do that, and sometimes you work at companies that don't have that, at least we're going to have a conversation where you have the ability to ask me as many questions as you want. Two, we agree on the schedule of when things need to be completed within specific chunks of time. And this is really important, the concept of chunking work into manageable and measurable units. Now, you can use one week, you can use two weeks, you can use sprints, it doesn't really matter. What is important here is consistency. Three, we agree on the definition of done, and this is where Almost all managers fail. Most managers can do the first things, right? But they fail when it comes to what does done mean. Does done mean that I'm running on production or staging or maybe my laptop? Does it mean that everything is per per pixel perfect UI or is it wireframe? Does it mean that we have unit testings and full integration into CICD automation? Those are different levels and definitions of done, and we have to agree on that. Four, we meet at least once a day on stand-up to be able to provide status updates on where we stand. Now, if you have nothing to update, that's fine. But if you have an issue that might impact our deadlines, you let me know as soon as you can. Five, at the end of our time chunk, usually the end of the sprint, we have a demo where you show me and all other stakeholders the deliverables and we discuss feedback. Now, 
The most important part is I leave you alone to do your work any way you want. Yes, I really don't care. I don't care if you do it from home. I don't care if you do it from the beach. I don't care if you do it at night or during the day. That's it. Rinse and repeat. Now, some of you might be thinking, wow, Yoam, didn't you just describe the agile process? What's new here? And yes, this is very similar to the agile process. The issue is that almost all companies and managers never really follow through with the entire agile process. And what I have done is to clearly define what I expect to be done at each step and what I need to do as a manager not just what you have to do as an individual contributor. And that's important because we both have responsibilities in order for this to be successful. So let's go ahead and tackle a few of the most common questions that I have to answer when I present these processes to teams. The first one is what to do if someone does not follow the process. So the first thing is always start with a one-on-one -on -one meeting asking them why. And you need to explain in details what you expect at each step. And I find that most of the time, all it takes is one meeting in person with someone to clarify that everyone has to follow the process, no exceptions. Remember, people need to understand the process, but they don't necessarily have to agree with it because you're not going to get 100% ag uh, agreement. And I always lead with context, which means I explain the reasoning, okay? I explain why we're doing it. As a manager, we are not managing by committee, but on the other end, we have to make sure people understand why they're doing what they're doing. So, Next question, what if someone follows the process but keeps delivering subpar outputs? And sometimes you have people who are following the process, they're engaged, and they want to do good work. However, when it comes to the end of the sprint demos, they consistently deliver subpar outcomes. The point here is that this is not a one-time event. Everyone has a bad sprint. That's okay. The issue is when it's not just one sprint, it's an ongoing challenge. This is a tricky situation since as a manager, you have someone who might be really motivated and willing, but is simply not good enough for what you're asking them to do. Now, the first step, as always, is to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation where you don't hit around the bush. You let them know that their outputs are not as good as you need them to be. For some people, just facing this reality opens up a discussion that helps you as a manager garner more context. You know, I once had an employee that was going through a divorce, and I didn't know about it, but his performance really showed degradation. Once we talked about it and he opened up to me about his personal situation, we were able to get him back on track. Now, that's it. Sometimes the issue is simply skills and not will. And when you're in the case where you only have a problem that has to do with skill, you really come down to two options. One is to give the person lower level tasks while you give them training and mentorship to get their skills up. The other option is you have to let them go or switch them to a different role. Listen. The worst thing you can do is to ignore the situation. When you do that, everyone else in the team, they view you and what you do as a manager, and that's a very strong signal that you don't really care about quality, and even worse, you are not holding people to the same standards. Don't do that. That's, that's horrible. Now, if none of these work, then you have to seriously consider that maybe this person is not a good fit for the team. And you have to start thinking about performance improvement plan or unfortunately, sometimes firing people. At days in, the secret to holding people accountable is open, direct, and clear communication. As long as you provide feedback on a regular and predictable cadence, you'll find that the vast majority of your team are happy and productive. I hope this helps. As usual, like, comment, and share to spread the world. 
Uh, see you next time. Bye.